Hello. Sometimes I lay awake at night gazing at the industrial ceilings of the abandoned asbestos processing plant I live in and think, oh no, did I miss out on early video game culture? Dink Smallwood is a 1997 freeware RPG where you live out the ambitions of a pig farmer who wants to become a hero while living in a shitpost. The game covers young Dink's quest as he goes through the world dealing with issues such as monsters, chad, and financial instability. Believe it or not, this little unassuming game is a cornerstone of the industry. We have it to thank for inspiring pretty much everything that came after it. First game to do adventure? Dink. First game to do bonkas? Dink. The movement between segmented maps led to the creation of Animal Crossing. Boots that make you go fast, Morrowind owes this game millions. Sick of his mundane life on the farm, he wishes for adventure. Tending to swine and enduring the taunts of Chad Milder has brought Dink to his limit. Thankfully, he receives his literary call to adventure. His mom burns down the house. But Dink's tough, and he takes it on the chin. Now I finally get to begin that patented Smallwood adventure. Punching pill bugs, proving myself to wizards, and succumbing to extortion. Gameplay-wise, this game keeps it simple. You are allowed 8 buttons. Inventory, map, movement, magic, and attack. The combat in this game is both physical and magical. Just like in an actual fight, if you get hit, there's no blinking invincibility state to save you. These battlefield conditions mean adopting a highly mobile fighting style of hit-and-run warfare. This mobility is key, as even simple contact with a pill bug will cause major injury. This tactic works on most enemies, like Stone Giant or Bonka, but the more cunning and devious adversaries like Slayer or Fast Pillbug warrant a more ethereal approach. Slayers and Fast Pillbugs are not good targets for melee combat, so for these instances, I deployed a calculated and patient strategy of using fireballs. Glamorous? No but I won. Magic revolves around what I like to call the fun meter. You can only cast spells when it's full, and the stronger the spell, the longer it takes to charge. There are two types of spells, fire and rain. Fire is a low damage, low charge projectile, which also serves as forest control, with an impressive late game upgrade. Rain is an AoE spell, which works very well if the AI gets caught on the geometry. Magic charge time and physical damage are decided by everyone's favorite part about video games numbers. Dink is a simple man. He is built upon three statistics, strength, magic, and defense. Each time you level up, the game graciously allows you to put a point into one of these figures. Strength gives you more attack, magic affects your spell cooldowns, and I imagine defense reduces damage taken, but to what extent, I have no idea. Outside of the story required level 5 magic ability, I just put points into strength, and that was the correct choice. On my journey across the countryside, I got to visit many wonderful locations, including towns, a nice forest, a giant duck island. With vistas like this, it almost wouldn't really matter if you're boyfriend accidentally made a bad investment on 23 Black with the vacation fund. I mean, look, babe, there's a whole world here, and it's all freeware. Listen, I know it was looking like this would have been your last Christmas with your grandma, but now we can see the cultured town of Terrace, or the exotic dragon island of Joppa. That's pretty cool, huh? Oh, right. I need that Alonzo Pean refill. Story. Once my residence was burned, I left to go stay with my aunt. There I bore witness to the most heinous of crimes, being rude to your house guest, and also domestic abuse. It turns out my uncle's a pretty cool guy. After witnessing his show of strength, I challenge him as a worthy opponent. As it turns out, beating up women is a much better way to train than by punching bugs. As I roam, I get involved in many events, from thwarting a terrorist attack on a parade, visiting an ethnic enclave, and causing a religious revolution, to killing dragons and vanquishing the terrifying ancient evil Seth. Dink is quite fun. However, in order to smoothly engage with this world, you will need some funding. Just like real life, a large part of this game is based on money, and that means a bit of required grinding. Now, there are two ways of doing this. You can go the route of a poor man and repeatedly kill dangerous beasts in the wilderness for a sort of peasant's wage, or you can employ the rich man's gambit, betting on fights at Giant Duck Island. I got myself a pretty good win streak and funded the rest of the game this way. Duck Island is a beautiful native reservation and well worth the visit. This gold is used for weapons, medical bills, and goodies. Many of these price tags are ludicrous, like a $1,000 bow. Keep in mind, even if you hold the bow, you won't hold the requisite wisdom to operate it efficiently until you find the hidden master to train you in the ancient art, which also costs a small fee. I would like to make a goodie recommendation. Speed Boots. Not only do these bad boys make you move super fast, they speed up every dink function. Though they restrict you to fighting unarmed, they elevate your attack speed to that of a recently dosed meth enjoyer. The DPS on this can get crazy, and speaking of speed, one of the best things about video games is of course speed running. Yes, video games might be turning youth brains into soup, but at least there's a cool and well-adjusted community for painstakingly optimizing games. As a seasoned veteran of the Autism Derby myself, when I saw that dink only had one run, I knew it was my time to shine and finally leave my mark on the internet. I am one of the best uh, live streamers in the world and also one of the best speedrunners in the world. And today I will be speedrunning Dink Smallwood. I am the world's fastest dinker. Okay, while, while, this, while Dink talks to the wizard, I'm gonna go, I'm gonna go take a shit. All right, I'm gonna go 
take care of that. I'm gonna go speed run that real quick before I come back to the speed run. So I'll be right back. Okay, now that I'm empty, I'm gonna be running a lot quicker. So Duck Island is one of the few places in the Dink universe where you can uh, gamble. All right. So I pretty much just have to kill the boss and then I'll be done because I've got like all the best shit in the game now. But I'm gonna go on a beer run real quick first. So I'll be right back. All right, all right, beer, beer run done. Time to finish this uh, speed run. Yeah! Got him, dude. All right, the speed run ends when I talk to the king. I'm really thinking this is a good time. How do I stop the timer? Uh... There we go. God, nearly had him. For the record, there was only one run when I submitted. These attempts were accepted alongside mine. But even with the competition tripling, I think I kept it pretty competitive. Thank you, Jolpoa. Your kind encouragement strengthens me. Not only is Dink freeware, but it also has a phone port, making it one of the easiest games to play during an arraignment. There's also an extensive library of user-made adventures called DMODs. You can play these straight from the browser and even sort by rating to ensure you experience the cream of the crop. Like Revenge of the Pigs, where you play as a pig who has to learn magic to kill the slaughter. Or Hide and Seek, a mod where Dink is gulming to find Milder while a Mission Impossible MIDI plays. And the reward for winning is a friend's midi. I would check out the highest rated mods, but I really don't want to be disappointed after experiencing Peak Dink. Dink is a legitimately fun and charming game. Sure, the gameplay isn't crazy, but I had a good time, and it actually gave me a couple of laughs. Which is nice. What isn't nice is Dink is some sort of malevolent entity. While recording for this video, I realized that for some reason, the output had been split into multiple 3 second video clips. And by that I mean specifically 9081 video clips. One of my attempts to remedy this issue caused me a couple of problems. When I came back to my PC, one of my monitors had gone dark and there were multiple nondescript error messages. Though I overcame this treachery by using FFmpeg, to this day I cannot get my computer to recognize any monitor on the DVI port. The scars of Dink run deep on my psyche. Would this issue be because I tried new recording settings on OBS I saw online without any kind of prior testing? Of course not. I don't create issues. Issues happen to me. Thank you for watching. Dink is now a good friend of mine, and in interest of stating his destructive desires, I will be placing him at the top of the game tier list. I'll even give him a little crown. Please, Dink, I've been through enough. Show some mercy. Anyways, I might make another video at some point. See ya then.